Good. Well, welcome everybody. Um, let's see. Today we're going to talk about uh, what it means to um, start a business as a photo manager. So let me. Uh, so how to start a business helping families manage their growing photo collections is the type title here. So whoops, I didn't mean to do that. What did I do? I meant to start slideshow, and I always want to turn off my video so I don't have to watch myself. So welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Kathy Nelson. I'm the founder and CEO of The Photo Managers. And over the past 14 years, we have helped hundreds of people start very successful businesses, how to start a business, uh, helping people manage their growing photo collection. So 20 years ago, right? Nobody had ever heard of professional business coaches. They hadn't heard of personal trainers or home organizers, but today those are household concepts right? That is becoming true more and more for professional photo organizers. Our professional community uh, includes people from over 20 countries, including the US, Canada, the EU, uh, the UK, you know, uh, England, Australia, South Africa, Malaysia, Brazil. I think we had our first member from, I know for sure, from Austria join uh, last week. And people come from varied backgrounds, right? We have members who are librarians, photographers, engineers, graphic designers, nonprofit management attorneys, and so many other professions. And they range in age from their mid twenties to seventies. Uh, currently we have more women than men who do this as a living, but that's quickly changing. Many members uh, will do this just part-time as a, a part of the, like the gig economy, but we have many doing it full-time. Some people have employees in brick and mortar stores. Uh, and most people, though, work from home. Some people have full-time jobs, like I mentioned. Others have, this is a solo business. We have couples who work together to supplement their income in retirement. We have moms who work remotely after their kids are asleep. So it is really a diverse community of people. And so what is it that people, why are people hiring photo organizers more and more? One, because our mobile devices have become the cameras in our hands at all times. How many can you relate to this, right? This results in over a billion digital photos taken yearly. And so while our ability to take photos and videos in an instant has accelerated, the technology to help us decide which ones are worth keeping has not kept pace. When you ask people how they feel about their photo collection, these are the words we hear over and over. I'm overwhelmed, I'm frustrated, it, it, it's helpless, you know, or I need you, right? And also right now, over 10,000 baby boomers are reaching retirement age every day. It's crazy when you think about that. I Google this because it's hard for me to fathom it, but it really is that number. They're beginning to think about downsizing, right? And they're wondering, does anybody care about these photo collections? Their children are getting married. They're starting to have their own families. And suddenly those old family photo albums and home movies take on increased value. And they're worried, like, you know, what do I do with these? That's a key, uh, great audience that are hiring photo organizers on a regular basis. But it's not only photos that have uh, families that have photos to scan. Many companies, schools, libraries, historical societies are just now starting to scan their annual reports, historical photos, documents, things that matter about their legacy. And they all have a growing digital problem. So as you can hear, the career opportunity to do meaningful work and make a difference in people's lives is really growing. So are you ready to learn more? Today, we're going to talk about why the work of what a photo organizer does matters, what a professional photo organizer actually does, who are the photo managers, who are we this organization, and how joining the photo managers can provide you with like a business in a box opportunity and plenty of time for Q&A. So if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and we will answer any question that you have uh, at the end of this presentation. And if there aren't any, I can guess what they are because I've been doing this for a long time and I'll answer, I'll give you the questions, but I prefer you to ask them yourself. Uh, so again, my name is Kathy Nelson. I'm the CEO and founder of The Photo Managers. I'm also the author of two books, Photo Organizing Made Easy, Going from Overwhelmed to Overjoyed, and A Business Roadmap, Professional Photo Organizers, Everything You Need to Grow and Start a Thriving Photo Organizing Business. So if you're wondering who are the photo managers, we are a global educational association that offers classes, an annual conference, professional certification, and a supportive community. Now, this is the key part about why the work that we do matters. I love this quote. There have been great societies that did not have the wheel, 
but no societies that did not tell stories. So the reason we take photos and videos, I think it's increasingly more and more also videos, is we are a people of stories, right? The way that we document our life experiences and what's happening is through, uh, through photos and videos. And that's how we tell stories. And that's what matters. That's why if you ask people, what's the one thing that they'd be devastated if they lost in a fire or flood, once they know their family and uh, pets are safe, it's going to be their photo collection, right? And so if your photo collection is completely disorganized and you have no idea where they are, your photos and videos are at high risk. And people really know that today. And so when you people ask what you're, what you're doing or what is it, we always say, don't you, photo organizing is what you do. Saving people's stories and helping them share their legacies is really the heart of what you do. That's the emotional connection that you want to connect people with. And so people come to the photo man organizers for so many reasons, right? Their photos are a mess. They have thousands and thousands of photos on their phone. They wonder if their kids will want their family photos. They have old home movies they haven't seen in decades. This is a big piece of a lot of people will find if they're opening up their boxes of photos, they're going to find VCR tapes and camcorder tapes and things like that. Sometimes people have experienced a flood, fire, tornado, hurricane. These things are happening, obviously, as we know, more and more frequently. And certainly this summer, it's just been uh, staggering to see the things that have been happening with weather risks around uh, and photos are at high risk of disappearing forever. Sometimes family members have been diagnosed with dementia or a terminal illness, and suddenly people realize time is short. Or some of the really fun things, like I am actually uh, practicing what I preach at this point. My son's getting married in, on Labor Day weekend, and I have been busy trying to gather all the old photos of his childhood uh, growing up and then getting her parents to send me the photos of her growing up so I can combine them together and there won't be a dry eye in uh, during the rehearsal dinner as we watch those photos of them as children and then them becoming a couple. So there's many times uh, people hire photo organizers to also celebrate those joyous events that happen in people's lives. So the critical takeaway today from this presentation that I'm going to do is one is you don't need to offer all the services I'm going to talk about or be an expert in everything that's completely impossible. And it's okay to start a business even if your own photos aren't organized. Like I just said, I am, uh, I'm actually hiring one of our members to do some of this work for me because I just don't have time. I'm busy running this organization. So don't feel guilty or feel like you're not qualified to start a business if your own photos aren't organized. And again, don't get too, um, it's like a fire hose of information sometimes. So uh, just take it in and think about some of the things that are of what are most interest to you. So people hire a photo organizer for the following reasons usually. They, they need their printed photos, their analog photos organized so that they can probably be, uh, they decide if they wanna save them, keep them or discard them, right? So many people still have boxes of printed photos, slides and negatives that need to be organized so they can be scanned for the future. This work can be done in person with a client or back in your own office. If you're wondering how can you organize someone else's photos when you don't know who anyone is, don't worry. It's a lot easier than you think and we have a lot of the forms and experience to help. And we have a course that you can take right away when you become a member that walks you through this process. Now, the second most common job that a lot of people do is scanning because a digitized uh, scanning is just a natural next step of what people need. They need a backup copy and it helps ensure that family photos will be safe and accessible for future generation. Scanning requires just some basic equipment and it can be a great entry point into this business. For a little overhead, you can get a lot of a great return on your business. People also hire professional photo organizers more and more for digital photo organizing. It's one of the fastest growing services our members provide because of just how big this problem has become. One of our members, Jordan Babion, loves to say that the average family now has the same number of digital assets a small business did just a few years ago. They just haven't figured it out yet, but people are beginning to catch on that they have way, way too many digital photos. In fact, because of this, the most photographed generation in history as most at risk of losing their photo heritage. Who can possibly sort through millions of screenshots and selfies to find the few that matter? That's where a professional photo organizer steps in by consolidating everything in one place, helping people realize where are, you know, I have photos in Dropbox, I have them on Amazon, I have them on my phone. I was actually at a meeting today uh, with um, our financial planner and you know, we meet once a year and the man, when they understood more of what I did, 
he joked, he said, he has a drawer full of old phones because on there are all the photos he doesn't want to lose. So, you know, he's a perfect example. His eyes lit up. He's like, oh my gosh, you know? And then meanwhile, the other woman that was in the room is a young mom and her eyes lit up. She was like, oh God, I'm overwhelmed. I have so many photos of my kids. I mean, everybody needs help in this area, right? And so a professional photo organizer will consolidate everything in one place, remove the duplicates, add keywords, create a backup, and then recommend a cloud service or online gallery so people can suddenly have access to all their photos. And a lot of times they'll merge their analog uh, collection that they've scanned with the digital collection so that suddenly it's amazing if all your photos are in one place, easily accessible, and people will pay a lot of money to have that done. And then comes what I call the creative fun part. Many people, after those critical steps are completed, then sometimes they will make uh, help make photo books of, of special photos of a trip, video slideshows, like I mentioned, the video montage I'm having done for my son's wedding, online photo galleries, framing photos, wall art. There's so many interesting things that can be done with a family's photo collection once they have their photos organized into kind of a format that they can actually find them. And then also, those are just a few of the areas that members focus on, but we have members who teach workshops and online classes that digitize VCR tapes, camcorders, and film, that create life history documentaries, that provide slideshows for meaningful life events. Uh, I was just mentioning too, I met a woman today, the second member or person that's, think, that's looked at joining us, they are deaf doulas. So there's a growing movement around um, end of life care, you know, and how do you help families walk through that process? How do you ask the right questions? They are, uh, there's a certification program. And a number of them have found their way to us because usually photos and things are involved. So that's just to give you an idea of the diversity of, of uh, opportunities and things that exist within this business. So like I mentioned, you may be thinking, wow, that's a lot to learn. But remember that important takeaway I said, you don't need to do it all. If you're not interested in getting scanning equipment, one of our preferred partners can span, scan for you. If you're not interested in doing digital photo organizing, that's okay. You can outsource that to somebody else. Um, so remember that you don't have to do all of these things. But this is something that we are starting to talk more and more about. We've realized there are three key personality traits for success as, as a professional photo manager. So if you can say yes to these things, or at least two of these three, you're in the right place. Number one, are you a lifelong learner? Are you someone who gets excited when learning something new? Because you know what? This business keeps changing. Technology keeps changing. And um, AI is coming in in a big way. We just did a webinar a couple of days ago about what's happening in the world of AI. It's like staggering and, ex and it's exciting and scary all at the same time, but, I, if you, but it's interesting to me. I, I'm a lifelong learner, so I'm intrigued by what's happening. Are you curious about people and their life experiences? Are you the person who loved looking at your own family photos? Are you the person who looks at your, you know, your parents or your grandparents or wish that you had asked your grandparents different questions, right? Do you bring a sense of curiosity to, to other people? And are you willing to try new things, fail and try again? Does the idea of watching a YouTube video and Googling for help scare or excite you? If it's exciting to you and not scary, then these are key personalities uh, traits for success as a professional photo manager. So again, I mentioned who we are as the photo managers. We help small businesses around the world achieve success as professional photo managers. We also educate consumers about the importance of organizing, saving, and sharing their photos and videos. That's who we are as the photo managers. So from here, what, what is the benefit and why would you want to consider joining the photo managers? We tell people it's really like having a business in a box, right? We don't actually send you a box, but based on over, uh, actually, we got to update this screen because it's 14 years of experience. Uh, we've created what we call the five C's of having a successful business. And so I'm going to walk you through these because everybody needs an acronym, right? We could give you a core foundation. We give you credibility, community, competency, and collaboration. So what do I mean by those? The first thing is our core foundation. Many people come and become a photo manager and they've never owned a business before. And so this is something we added a year ago. We realized if you've never been in business, then it would be helpful to go through this course, which is included in your membership. It's $149 if you bought it separately, but it's, it's included in your membership. It's 
what are the business startup costs? How do you choose the services? I just went through a bunch of services, right? How do you decide which ones to focus on first? How do you price yourself? What is a workflow for a photo organizing project? If you're going to outsource some of it, how do you do that? How do you plan your customer journey from the time they say hello to the time you hand them their project? You know, what should that look like for the customer so that you have raving fans, right? How do you find clients? And so we take you through all of this, and then we have a final checklist to make sure that you're ready to launch your business. So that's included in membership. We also send you a copy of my best-selling book, Photo Organizing Made Easy, Going from Overwhelmed to Overjoyed. You'll get that in the mail within a month of joining. And then we have a tremendous amount of business resources and what we call our training vault. So every month we do two different training webinars. It's included in your web in your um, membership and it's topics that are of interest to you. We do a lot of, we survey our members and ask them, you know, what is it that they want to learn? So for instance, I mentioned this this week, we did uh, a, how to use AI in your photo business. Um, we just finished doing one on what kind of business insurance do you need around people's photos? I think in the month of August, we're doing uh, some social, like how to build your email list. Uh, also, we're doing a whole training on privacy, how to understand what your clients need to know about privacy, which is becoming a real hot topic and what you need to know. So every month we do these webinars. If you can't make them live, they're usually at one o'clock Eastern time. They are always recorded and they're put in our training library. So you can go back and watch all the you know, past training that we've done when you watch, or you can, you know, uh, so that you have access to them at any time. We also have a pre-made presentation for you. So people always ask, well, how do I find clients? One of the first ways you can find clients besides your own social network is your local library. A lot of businesses are always looking for speakers on topics and organizing your photos can be a great topic that people are always interested. We've created a PowerPoint and a presentation all pre-made for you. So you don't even have to, you can, you'll put in your own pictures and you'll add your own uh, personal stories and anecdotes, but all the rest has been done for you. So there's a lot of resources that we provide. So it's really like, again, like a business in a box. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and think of all these things on your own. We also, uh, from a credibility percentage, we also have what we call our best practices and our code of ethics. This is really important. We knew early on that having certification was really important for credibility and having a code of ethics, which is all about privacy, how you manage clients' photos, really important, and also will help build your credibility. Also, we have what we call professional certification. So to become a, once you're a certified professional, you can be found on our directory where, you know, find a pro, you can put in the state or the country and your name and all your information will pop up. That will not happen until you go through certification, which is included in your membership. So the certification is, is really, you can do that in a weekend. It's training on best practices, like what DPI should you be scanning? What do you do if you come across a professional photographer's photos? What is best practices? Like you should, those are copyright. You know, you need to make every effort to find the professional photographer. So we train you on all those really important topics. We don't teach you how to do photo organizing. It's really about best practices. Then what you need, you will do is you will, um, once you get a paid client, it's not for family and friends, you will document the process from start to finish of working with a client. And really the reason we have you do that documentation is we're prompting you through the process of best practices. So we want to know, you know, when did you send an estimate? How many emails did you have with the client, you know, following up with them? All of that is because we know what will create raving fans for you, basically. So we're kind of teaching you through the process. Once that's done, you upload that to our website. You provide your uh, reference check. We call your reference. We check on that. You have an interview with me. And once you go through that process, then you're a certified pro. So it's not as arduous as it sounds, but it is really important. And again, that's part of credibility. And so that you, this is something that you can then usually raise your rates or have a chance to really kind of toot your horn. Like, hey, I've invested my time and energy in becoming a certified pro. The third C is community. And I'd say this is one of the, we, the, we say a rising tide lifts all boats and we are collaborative, not competitive. We have uh, just an amazing community of people. They talk to each other a lot on a private only Facebook group. It's like a 24 hour tech support with any question that you have is gonna be answered within minutes. We also have what we call regional meetings, regional groups. So as soon as you join, you will be uh, within a week or so, you'll be introduced to your regional leader. We're still small enough that like all of California is one region. The uh, East Coast is a region. 
the Midwest, you know, there's, we have an amazing uh, EU group uh, that they're meeting for the first time in London at the end of September on their own. I think we have 35 members in, um, in Europe at this point. We have members in Australia. So, but the regional meetings are, it's free. These are volunteers who, are, uh, who run these regional meetings and they usually get together on Zoom once a month. It's a chance for you to meet new members that live within maybe a driving distance of you, learn from experienced members. So we have a lot of ways that we, inter we connect you with the community because it's hard to be in business by yourself. And we, again, I mentioned we are, there's no competition at this point. There's so many different areas and of expertise that different members focus on that everybody is there to help each other. And so it's really fun to just be a member just for the community itself. We also do every month, we do what we call a member huddle. These are like member networking groups. And we give like a little topic, like what's your elevator pitch or how, how do you answer the question, how much will this cost? Or what are some meaningful client stories? So there's lots of ways that we to try and engage new members and ex existing experienced members within the community. And a lot of our experienced members show up to these meetings every month. We also hold an annual conference. Here's our pictures from just, we were in Orlando this past April. So you can see the photographs here. You see the one with the flags. Those are our international members that came from uh, as far away as Australia, South Africa, the Netherlands, uh, Brazil. So it was really fun. But every year we will be in Columbus this April, early April of 2024. Uh, so you can already register for that. It's a great chance also to meet with exhibitors, and the conference is an amazing way to invest in your business and, and go through great training. So we do that also every year. The fourth C I mentioned was competency. So you want to feel confident in your ability to, when you, it's nerve wracking to go. And that's where that idea of being a lifelong learner comes in is that uh, your first client, you're going to be nervous, right? Your first client who says, you know, I have thousands of photos on my phone and what do I do, right? I don't even know how to get started. And you're going to think, um, you're going to take a deep breath and say, I can help you. And we have courses that we have are included in your membership. So we have the building blocks of digital photo organizing, which will teach you about digital imaging basics, how to do a digital photo organizing workflow, how to diagnose an unhealthy photo system. All that's included in your membership. And you would watch that course when you need it. We don't recommend you watch every course we've created for you right away because it's just too much information. But it, these are all here available to you when you need them. We also have a course on how to organize your clients' printed photos. You can see there, Sandra takes you through a true life uh, photo organizing project where she went from bins and boxes like that, turned it into this final collection. And uh, so that's included again in your membership as part of building your competency. We also, last year we hired Aaron Taylor, who is a systems expert because we know that having your own business means having systems in place. What do we mean by that? We mean things like project management. How do you, uh, one of our newer members just wrote, I've been, I'm a new member, she put this on Facebook, I think maybe a couple months, and I've had four new clients, it's going great, but I have two meetings tomorrow, and how do you manage having multiple projects at once? She's like, I have a whiteboard, but what do I do? This course, these breakouts we have, um, you know, project management, how to manage a project. These are topics that come up all the time. And so we have training on that, but also people, lots of people answered her question and talked about how they manage that and what they do and, and things like that. So again, this is all included in your membership and conversations that we have all the time. And then last of all, the last C is collaboration. So uh, in September is called Save Your Photos Month. That's coming right up. We have created a media kit for you so that you can go out and offer uh, classes to your local community and position yourself as an expert during the entire month of September. We have all the social media cards for you created already. You don't even have to, it's just a turnkey event where you can start uh, letting people know in your own community that September is Save Your Photos Month. So it's a great chance for you to um, spread the word about what you do and also provide quality education to your, to your, to people. Whoops. We also have an amazing group of partners and sponsors. These are companies who are really excited to work with you and offer significant discounts on their products. That barcode, if you scan that, you can, uh, it'll take you right to a booklet. And so you'll see like Mylio Photos, Forever, Printique, Good Ones, Photo Flash Drive, all these companies and a growing group of these companies. Uh, we don't give you what the discount 
I think we say what your discounts are, but we don't tell you how to get those unless you're a member. But that's another benefit of membership. And this list continues to grow. And so it's a great, it's another revenue stream. Sometimes people will pass on the savings. Sometimes they keep the savings for themselves. It's up to you. But uh, these companies are excited to work with you and offer you discounts on their products. So the cost of membership is it's $175 to be a member uh, either quarterly or it's $599 to be a member for the full year. So you save $100. Uh, we do give a 30-day money back guarantee. We've never had anybody uh, take us up on that, but that, that we are, you know, that's certainly an option. And um, we also have a special. It's, we, this is our anniversary special. We're extending it just for this group. We just ended this a few days ago. If you join by the end of the month, which is, I think, Monday, uh, you'll get a free copy of my book, the, my second book, The Business Roadmap for Professional Organized. And we are also going to be doing, uh, Nick's Play has donated a frame worth $299. And we also have our photo organizing skills bundle, which are seven uh, conference classes worth $149. We are putting everybody's name in and we will be drawing a winner uh, at the end of the month for uh, by early August. And so if you join by the end of the month, you'll be entered to for both of these opportunities. So I know I've taken you through quite a bit of information in a very short period of time, but I know everybody's busy. And uh, so I am going to stop sharing and I'm gonna turn back on my camera. Oops. And um, tell me if uh, I'm here to answer questions. So do we have, have questions come in from that presentation? Yes, the first question is what training or other things are not included in the membership other than the annual conference that would be an additional cost? So what's included in membership as far as courses and what isn't? Uh, all the courses I just mentioned are included. So we, what we call is our core competency. So the basics of digital photo organizing, uh, the basics of printed photo organizing, starting a whole business system, starting a business, all our webinars are included. We, our goal is to have uh, another core competency course on scanning and home movie conversion this year, uh, maybe early uh, 2024 before we get all that together. Uh, other than that, the only additional cost for training would be, uh, we have Profitability Live. It's a virtual uh, three-day, two-day event where we talk all about pricing. It'll be in November. We are doing uh, this year, we have members doing case studies where they take you from uh, through a client project from start to finish. Uh, that is $199, right? And then you have lifetime access to those. Other than that, we really try not to have a lot of additional costs. There are, if you wanted to do a deep dive into understanding Apple Photos or a deep dive into uh, Lightroom, those are additional courses because the instructors are professional members and we compensate them for uh, their expertise. That's optional. Not everybody needs those. And that would be, we wouldn't recommend you do that until you really need that. So we don't recommend that you buy lots of courses. We've seen that some people will buy lots of courses and never get a client. And we really want you to get in business and have a client. And is the membership fee, um, is that one time or an annual renewal? It's annual renewal. So it's, um, yeah. And what about the camera scanning course? Is that included in membership? No, that's not. We just finished our 25% uh, off sale. Maybe we could squeak one in, but no, because again, that's a more advanced course. Not everybody um, needs to, should be doing camera scanning right off the bat. And so those are courses. And then uh, we've hired the, you know, the person that teaches the course and things like that. So that would be, uh, you can, we don't recommend I don't want to get into deep, deep, but we recommend you could start with just a basic flatbed scanner. And um, some people get the Epson fast photo. There are some issues about keeping that clean, but a good basic uh, Epson flatbed scanner is not a bad place to start uh, to, and then invest as you get more and more clients. If you got a big job, then you would, the profits and stuff that you'd make from that would be worth then investing in the course. And so sort of just to summarize what Kathy is saying as well, um, the courses that are included in membership are sort of foundational getting started courses. We have a basic one on digital photo organizing, a basic one on printed photo organizing, both uh, tailored for working with clients. And then we have some basic business courses. But if you wanted to do a deep dive into other topics, we, we have um, those courses are not included in membership. Those are a separate purchase. And we, but we do recommend only investing in those when you need it and as you need it. 
We don't have any other questions currently. Um, like I said, I have some, I know people are like, how do we know how much to charge is usually a question that people have and they don't, uh, sometimes people ask or sometimes they don't. I recommend so if you're thinking about um, like, how do you know how much to charge that you do some research is what is the, what's the hourly rate a service professional charges in the area of the country that you live or the, or the world that you live in. And by that, I mean, what is a professional uh, organizer charge, a massage therapist, a bookkeeper, um, a physical therapist, speech speech therapist, a therapist, you know, people that charge, they provide a, a fee for services. It's going to range anywhere from a low of probably seven, 65, $70 to maybe 150, 175, again, depending on where you live in the country. That's where you want to set your price because you are a service provider offering a highly professional skill. And you're taking the time to learn and stay and keep current with the technology that keeps changing. Like we could you know, I could have put up a slide in just the past year of the number of Costco and shop, you know, Shutterfly and all the changes that have happened that you are educating yourself. We're going to provide you with that education. That's what people are paying you for. Just like you pay, you know, your account when you do your taxes, right? You could do your own taxes. Maybe you do, but if you don't and you've decided that because you need to hire an accountant, well, you're expecting them to have the expertise about the newest tax codes and the newest tax laws. Uh, we'll be bringing a lot of training on privacy coming. You know, those are the things that we provide and that's what you're charging for. And then people tend to charge either in, in our blocks of time in package time or hour by hour. We do a lot of training and top and conversation about that. And the same thing with what, what's the cost for scanning, do research in your area. You're not competing with the low, this isn't a race to the bottom. Uh, some of those big scan box scan companies where you know put everything in a box and send it to us. That's not who you're competing with. You're providing um, quality service. You're going to make sure that the photos are cleaned. It's like a white glove service. And so you're not trying to price yourself the way that those people are. So I just wanted to share that because that's usually a question that people ask. And that's something that really worth thinking about. And um, to build off of that, we have another question about those that charge um, for scanning and they charge per scan. Is that the fee or is there something in addition like a, an hourly fee how do people that charge per scan um handle we, that kind of pricing but you know again we don't tell you what to price and we we just talk about best practices most uh best practice would be if you're charging a per scan fee which a lot of people do you do charge your hourly fee if you have to remove the photos from an album if you have to put them back in an album um so, or if you have to get them organized beforehand, if the client provides them to you in the order that they want them scanned, then, you know, then that's your scan fee. But if there's additional work, most people will charge their hourly fee for that. And a lot of our members will also have um, some sort of package or per scan cost, but that's rooted in some sort of math that they've done based on their hourly fees. So they know approximately how many photos they can scan per hour and that will help determine how much is per scan. Yeah, we did a little contest actually at last year's conference. We had one member that charges per hour for scanning and the other does per piece. And then we they did a contest and uh, it came out about even. So it's interesting uh, if which, which direction that you go. Um, and so, yeah, she, uh, Isabel's right. Another big growing business has been doing is scanning um, scrapbook albums. Lots of people made scrapbook albums. And so more and more uh, members are finding, and a lot of them will do per page as opposed to, you know, whether it's a dollar or dollar fifty or whatever per those large 12 by 12 uh, pages that people want scanned. Now, are there commonly used software for photo organizing? So, yes. Uh, if you're from, if you've been a, if you're familiar with Lightroom, a lot of our members use Lightroom uh, is one. If you're not, we have a lot of training on that. Mylio is becoming an increasingly uh, common uh, software that they have. Uh, we have a partnership with them. You can get certified in there and trained by them, and then they will refer clients to you. Um, some people just stay in the Mac ecosystem. So really, you're going to decide what what it is that you know. Most people can get taught, eventually get cross trained on all of them, but it's uh, definitely where you start with what you know and then build your knowledge from there. And does our training provide information on getting a business license and setting up accounting books? 
yeah, as part of that overall, you know, we do a high level overview of that, but um, we talk about becoming an LLC or a solo entrepreneur, um, which kind of accounting software you want to use. Some people, you can just start out with a spreadsheet. You definitely want to set yourself up as a business. You are starting a business. This is not um, a multi-level marketing or anything. You are, you're an independent business owner. It's with your own business identity. And we're really like the trade association that supports you in that business. And um, what kind of computers would you recommend someone needs to have to do this kind of work? Yeah, that question gets asked all the time on the Facebook. Uh, you know, a good, um, it's really the, what matters is this, the, your processing speed. If you're going to be doing a lot of work, you're going to want a good computer with, you know, you might be upgrading your computer. So again, on our Facebook, the people talk about this all the time. You can just start with a basic computer, but depending on the level of work you're going to be doing, you might want to be upgrading. It's a low investment to get started. Uh, you can start with a basic scanner, a basic computer. Again, and as your business grows and you get more clients and things, you'll start to upgrade the the what you have based on talking with other people and getting advice and things like that. And a question from someone who lives in New York City, how can they get the word out to such a large community? <laughs> we have members in New York City. You can't get the word out to all of New York, right? You ought to think in terms of um, of your community and people of, of interests that of things that you're interested in. So um, is there a local I mean, in, you know, is there, do you have a local community library? Are there, is there a community center in your area? Are you in a building with uh, multiple, you know, like do you live in a building with lots of people? Um, and again, is there a, like a community Facebook group where people are asking each other questions? Is there, those are different ways like that. Is there a local coffee shop where, you know, that you've gotten to know the local member and you can put up a flyer? Is there a frame shop nearby where people get their things framed? So I know, you know, New York's not far from us, my daughter. We have members in New York um, and they specialize in all sorts of different areas. We have one member who focuses on fam uh, pets. <laughs> she makes photo books of uh, people and, and, their, and their pets and that's a big market. Um, so I don't know if hopefully that's helpful, but definitely don't think the whole city. Think, think, uh, think about the target market that you want to reach, and then where are those people? And do some uh, photo organizers work remotely? Yes, we have quite a few that have strictly remote businesses. Miss um, Freddie is a perfect example of maybe people follow her on social media, but we do have members that uh, work only you know evenings where they're logging into somebody else's computer doing that work uh, and. So that's definitely an option. And then you're going to be focused more on the digital uh, photo organizing or people will ship you their boxes of things. My son is doing this now full time in Connecticut. One of his biggest clients is in, she's in California. I think she's in San Francisco. I don't you know. He, she boxed up all her photos, mailed it to him. And he just did a digital photo organizing consultation with her and gave her homework. And she's going to be, he's going to be doing all her digital photos. And he can do that by logging into her computer, her computer remotely. Is it better to specialize in this industry? We suggest, that's a good question. I think in time, it makes sense to know who your target market is. From That's good basic marketing. Like, who are you for? But you may not know that right off the bat. You know, some members start out thinking that they're, they're only interested. They, they kind of discover the audience that they, they most enjoy. Where we have members who say, I only want to, you know, I really like working with very large photo collections of fam multiple family members and things like that. Or Isabella in New York, who really works with um, clients only, she only wants to work with uh, iPhone families, families with, that use an iPhone. And she wants to teach them how to take better photos all the way to organizing their photos. But she, so she's narrowed into that niche, but none of them started out knowing what their niche was. So we kind of say, start out, try everything, and then you'll discover what it is that you really enjoy. Doesn't look like we have any other questions currently. Um, oh, we do have a question about, do historical societies ever call photo organizers for help? I don't know if they call the photo organizer. It might be more the photo organizer gets to know their local historical society and builds a relationship with them. That's a great place to do a presentation on, on organizing your photos. They usually don't have uh, much of a budget. 
But if there's grants and things like that out there in terms of maybe helping the historical society, uh, we see a growing group of nonprofits in small businesses hiring. Photo Some of our members are now really focused only on working with small businesses um, because they feel like it's, you know, they, they've learned how to put these presentations together and it's maybe an easier, it's a higher price sell, you know, and that's the market that they want to target. Uh, so again, it's, it's a relationship building business though. You can do it from online with, you know, social media, but honestly, when people turn over their photos to you, it's a, it's a, there's a connection that happens. And I think um, getting out uh, to net, local networking groups, that's the other person in New York. There's, you know, is there a, a BNI business networking group in your, in your area? There's probably, you can Google that. Uh, your local chamber of commerce. I know one of our members in San Diego, she's, I think the, the chamber of commerce that she joined just hired her to do their 150th anniversary. They hired her, she joined, and then they hired her it's a big job that she's going to do for them. And um, so that's an interesting connection there. So. And um, do people ever get upset about the fact that they need to pay for this as a service, considering that it's a new thing? Um, this person's saying that people that they've met want it to be practice, be a practice practically free service. <laughs> well, then they're not your right client. So you got to remember who your target market is. We are not, um, you can give back if you want. You can say, you know, I have, uh, first of all, though, it's, there's an investment, right? And so if they want this to be free, then they can go do it themselves. There's lots of online videos. They can, and so a lot of members will, people, when they complain about price, a lot of members talk about clients that say, I'll go do it myself. And then they come back a year or two later and say, oh, you know, so it's really knowing your worth. And then knowing that you're investing in your time, nobody would ask a physician to do it for free because it's a new, I mean, you know, it's just so you, we talk a lot about understanding your value and how valuable are the photos. So remember, be, photo organizing is what you're doing. It's the work, but what you're selling is the, is the peace of mind. I always said, no client ever said to me, darn, I can't believe I paid you all that money to get back my get those photo albums of my kids finally done. I mean, it's priceless, right? And our members talk about clients crying when this work is done. So, uh, and you think about what, how much we invest in taking photos, developing photos, looking for photos. I mean, so that's really where you want to understand your value. And again, they're not your target market. It's definitely going to be a two income family, probably people with expendable money who also pay, they're used to paying for services. They probably have a cleaning lady. They might have a lawn service. They might have you know, all those different services. That's not to say that you don't want to give back to, to lower different communities. You certainly have that option, but it is uh, to make a living at it. You do need to be charging what you're worth. Yeah. Not everyone's going to be your client. And, and understand. you may not be your client. That's the other thing is yeah. if when we, a lot of business owners have to get over that. It's a mindset thing. They think, well, I would never pay for that. Well, you're not your client. Right. So it, you definitely need to realize that you're not targeting yourself. And do you see any correlation or dovetailing of genealogy services and pictures with photo organizing? It's that's a growing uh, niche market. In fact, we were just talking about uh, we were doing our call for speakers uh, and we talked about what do we we're going to call it uh, niche and diverse markets, because there are so many different niche markets that uh so genealogy is a huge one we are um we presented at roots tech we will we'll probably be there again this year which is the largest genealogy conference in the world so yeah there's a natural fit between that and again that's another skill set though for people that really understand genealogy uh so yeah there's uh, because it's really about the photo i mean it's about the genealogy but then people want to see the photographs and see and some people are hiring people to set up their ancestry uh, accounts and things like that so I think that's it. Great question. Yeah, others coming through. Uh, so again, uh, this is Isabel who's here answering the question. And Isabel uh, manages up the back end our support. You would get to know Isabel. Also, we have a new, uh, we just hired an operations uh, director I'm really excited about. She might be here on the call, Kimberly uh, or Kim. And uh, we have a great team of people that are here to support you. Great, and there's Kim, she's there waving. Uh, 
So we'd love to welcome you. We've had quite a few numbers already, new members this month. We do a new member orientation. It'll be tomorrow. We do it every month though. So if you join in the next little bit, you can join new member orientation. And our goal is to help you be successful. And uh, we have an amazing community. I feel really confident that if this is something you're interested in, uh, we're a great fit for you. And um, we care deeply. We just did a, we have a something called a masterclass, which is part of our conference and the coaches that we're talking to our members about if they are interested in really scaling their businesses where they have employees. We have many members at this point who are scaling their businesses where they need help. They start hiring employees and things. And uh, Darla says something really, we care. And I think that's true, you know? So we care because we're curious people too. We care about photos. And so we care about you having a successful business. We'd love to welcome you. And um, if you have more questions, you can reach out to us. And thanks for your time today.